If you've been driving for a certain amount of time outside the UK and you've just moved to the UK and you want a driving license, it will be relatively simple for you to get one. Just kidding. No, it won't. In fact, you might have to unlearn a lot of things when it comes to driving in the UK. Here's the thing. Getting a license in the UK for driving is not as straightforward as you might think. I have been driving for about 10 years in India until now, so I thought it wouldn't be too much of a challenge when it came to driving in the UK, but I was wrong. The good thing is you can use your Indian license to drive in the UK for up to one year. I'm talking about an Indian driving license and not an international driving license. You don't need an international driving license. We could even buy a car with our Indian driving license in the UK. But after a year, your Indian driving license expires in the UK. So if you want to drive beyond a year in the UK, you will need to get a UK driving license. And that is where we royally messed up. So in today's video, I'll be telling you what went wrong, what you need to do to get a license and what to do, what to avoid. With that, I'm Ashika and let's dive in. Now, depending on which country you're coming from, you may or may not need a UK driving license. So you can quickly check over on this page. It will let you know whether you need to convert your license, whether you need a new UK license or whether you'll have to apply for a driving test in the UK. If you belong to the EU, you can continue using your EU license and driving in the UK. You don't have to take a test. If you belong to these other countries, like the ones mentioned here, you can continue driving in the UK, but you just need to exchange your old driving license for a UK one by paying £43. But if you belong to India like I do, you will be able to use your Indian license for a year and then you have to apply for a UK driving license by taking the tests. So if you're wondering if you can take the test as soon as you move to the UK, the answer is no. You have to be in the UK for 180 days before you are able to apply for a UK driving license. Until then, you can continue using your old Indian license. And is it as simple as just taking a test? Absolutely not. Well, for starters, if you belong to India or any of the other countries that weren't mentioned in the list that I showed you earlier, you'll first need to get a provisional license. It's a fairly simple process. You can apply for it online. You need to pay £34 and you can either apply for the entire thing online or you can head over to your post office. You get a form out there, fill out the form, you send it to them and you should be able to get your provisional license. Now, assuming all of the information you fill out is accurate, you should get your provisional license by post in a few days. Now, the next thing you need to be aware is to get a driving license in the UK, you need to give two tests. The first test is your theory test and the second test is your practical test. When I gave my test in India, I was just made to drive for a little while, like five minutes or something and asked a few road signs and that was it, I got my license. In the UK, that couldn't be further from the case. Now, in order to pass your test, you first need to give the theory test. You can't give your practical test without giving your theory test first. You have to pass your theory test and then you are eligible to apply for a practical test. The theory test comprises of two parts, the multiple question section and the hazard perception test. The multiple question test will check your knowledge on the highway code, traffic signs and driving essential skills and you'll get 57 minutes to answer 50 questions. Now, I used these two books to study everything I needed to know, and I actually got 47 out of 50, which is, well, pretty decent. In order to pass this test, you need to get 86%. In the hazard perception test, you'll be shown a couple of videos, and you will have to spot the hazards that are coming up on the road. Now, you have to book a slot for your theory test online. It costs about 23 bucks, and you'll have to go to a center where the test is available. Like we didn't have a center in Maidenhead, so I went over to Reading to give my um, theory test. You get slots pretty easily. Once you get to the center, you will have to give them your provisional license and they'll check all of the details and they'll take you to a little computer cubicle and all the cubicles are blocked out so you can't see anybody beside you. Nobody can sit with you and help. You can't use your phones. You can't use any help. There will be a timer on your screen. The questions will start. You'll be able to go back, forward, all of that. And you will have, like I said, 50 minutes to answer 57 questions. And at the end of it, you will get your results within a few minutes of you giving your test. I think I'm at 57 minutes for 50 questions. Now, once you're done with this, you will get a little paper which says that you have passed your theory test. And this now makes you eligible to go and apply for your practical driving test. Before I move ahead, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now is an absolutely great time to do it. Hit the subscribe button now and click on the bell icon for notifications. Now, one of the things you will realize when you start driving in the UK is that almost everyone follows road rules and road rule signs and traffic signs and all of that in the UK. So the point is that if you don't follow them or if you don't know them, two, of, two things can happen. Now, either you can be really dangerous to either yourself or to everybody else on the road. Or the second thing is you might end up holding up traffic because you don't know what to do. 
and everyone assumes you know how to drive. The reason I say this is because a lot of the road rules and uh, traffic signs are very different from what you probably have back home. So if you have been driving in a different country for a lengthy period of time, you might be tempted to think that you can just come and give the practical test and you should pass because, well, you have been driving for a really long time. But the probability is very high that you will fail. The average pass rate in the UK for driving tests for somebody who's giving the test for the first time is about 46 to 50 percent, which means half of all of the people giving their tests for the first time fail. The average number of times somebody gives the test in the UK before they pass is three to four times. The point I'm trying to make over here is that it is not easy to pass the driving test, the practical driving test in the UK without taking driving classes in the UK. The other thing is when you eventually give your practical test and if you don't have your own car, you will have to rent out a car from a car driving company and they will point blank ask you if you are an overseas driver and if you are, whether you've taken classes in the UK or not. If you haven't taken classes, they're either going to charge you an arm and a leg to rent out their car to you or point blank refuse you because they genuinely don't believe either that you will pass or that you will bring the car back safely. Now, driving classes in the UK cost approximately £34 per hour, depending on where you're taking those classes and who you're taking those classes with. New drivers often require at least 45 hours of driving practice with an instructor and about 20 hours of driving by themselves. If you are an experienced overseas driver, they usually recommend at least 10 classes before they can evaluate whether you're ready for a test or not. Now, once your instructor tells you you are ready for the test, you will have to book a practical test, which is where there's a bit of a challenge again. At the moment, the UK is facing a backlog of up to three years where practical driving tests are concerned because of COVID. That means you might have to wait for a considerable amount of time before you get a driving slot. Not for three years, obviously. It now takes approximately 15 to 24 weeks to get a driving test slot if you apply through the government website. The other way to do it is to go through agents. So what you'd ideally have to do is call up all the driving instructors in your area or ask your driving instructor if they know anyone who can help you get a slot. And if you are lucky, if somebody else has cancelled a slot from somewhere else and it goes back on the website and it's available, you might get one within a few days or weeks. Now, the flip side with this is the test, which should have otherwise cost you about 62 bucks if you're doing it on a weekday or 75 bucks in a weekend is now going to cost you a lot more. Apart from that, what you'll also have to pay for if you don't have your own car is the cost of renting out your instructor's car for that day. So you're looking at another couple of hundred pounds there again. Now, the driving test is for 50 minutes, of which 20 minutes will be independent driving with navigation, and the rest will be general driving with instructions by the examiner. One or two maneuvers, which include a reverse or a parallel parking, a reverse or forward bay parking, or pull up on the side of the road and reverse two car lengths. There'll also be show me, tell me questions, which I have linked below if you'd like to learn these. The test can be terminated earlier if the examiner feels you are a dangerous driver. Now, on the day of the exam, you will have to go to the examination center, which again, Maidenhead doesn't have one, so it's Reading or Slough. Uh, but you aren't restricted to pick a driving center which is close to your house. You can pick it anywhere in the UK. And you will have to go with your provisional license again. They'll check the details. They'll assign an examiner to you. This, the examiner will then sit in the car with you and instruct you on where you're going to go, or what route you're going to take. You can have an additional person sitting with you in the car if you feel you need some moral support. But remember, they aren't allowed to talk to you at all during the entire test. Now, as a part of the test, you are allowed to make 15 minor faults and uh, you will still pass. But if you make any of those 15 faults repeatedly about four times, then it will be considered a major and then you fail. If you obviously make any majors, you will fail. As you keep driving, the examiner will be sitting beside you with a little tablet and making note of all of the mistakes that you have made. And depending on how many you have at the end of the entire test, you will be told whether you've passed or failed. Now, considering this is a lot of money at the end of the day, here are some tips that I suggest you use so that you can lower the cost and still get a driving license. First off, don't wait for one year when your license is expiring. As soon as you hit the six months mark, please give your uh, theory test immediately and then work on giving your practical immediately because if you have a car especially you don't need to rent out an additional car so you can still save in a lot of money of not having to rent out a car now the second thing is practice as much as you can apart from your sessions with your instructor if you have a friend 
or a family member who lives in the UK and who has had their UK driving license for more than three years, they can ensure you to drive with their car. They can sit with you in the car and they can practice along with you while you have your provisional license to drive. You should remember that if you are applying for your license after a year of you being in the UK, the insurance that you would have had earlier would have expired. So you will not be able to drive with your insurance. So you'll need somebody else with third party coverage or comprehensive coverage to be able to cover you for that. They would need to have had their license for three years. So if you are applying for your license after being in the UK for a year, you will need to make sure that whoever you are practicing with has insurance that covers you. If you do have a friend or a family member whose car you have been practicing in, and if you can use their car for the test, again, there it saves you hundreds of pounds. So that's something you should consider. But remember, they need to be in the car with you and the insurance needs to be covered and all of that. Now, if you're not in a hurry to get your license and somebody else in your family already has one or you have no pressing need, then avoid going through the agents. Just book a slot through the gov.uk website. It might take you a longer period in time, but it'll save you a substantial amount of money, approximately 180 pounds or so. Do not give the test until you feel or you're confident you are ready, because in all honesty, it's better to spend that 35 pounds for one more extra hour of practicing instead of spending 750 pounds and then failing. So unless you're 100% confident and you've done a bunch of mock tests and you believe you're confident and you will pass, don't give the test. Something else I recommend you do is watch a lot of guided driving videos which are available on, the, on YouTube or watch mock test videos because they typically take you on test routes in that video and they'll show you somebody else who is driving. They'll show you what mistakes they've made or how they have done the, with their maneuvers or what they've done right, what they've done wrong. So even though you aren't behind the wheel of a car, you're getting a lot of exposure by just seeing how somebody else is dealing with the test route that you're looking at. And finally, Pick your test centers smartly. Some test routes are more difficult than other test routes. They're all not the same. Some test routes have um, a dual carriageway as a part of the test. There's no, no test route which has a motorway, which is a good thing. Some test routes have very narrow roads. Some test routes are on very busy routes. So lots of people running across the road, lots of traffic. What time you take the test is also really important because if you're doing it, during school hours or during peak traffic hours, it obviously means a lot more chaos on the road. And if you're doing it during the lull period when everyone's already gone to work, a lot, lot less distractions on the road. So it's probably easier to pass at that point. So what time you pick your test and where you pick your test is really important. It's very easy. What you should ideally do is probably do some research on the easier driving test routes in the UK, especially the ones around you and then probably look for availability in those test routes rather than picking a test route that you know is really difficult. Now, after you've completed your entire test, your examiner will let you know immediately whether you have passed or failed. And well, if you've passed, absolutely great. If you've failed, the rule right now is that you can apply after 10 days. It might change in summer because that's what um, was being foretold. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, but you can obviously check. They were saying that it might be changed to about 30 days going ahead, but they haven't changed that rule yet. But don't worry, if you haven't passed, you can always try again. And like I said, a lot of people fail at least three or four times in the UK before they get their license, so nothing to worry about. Now, if you feel this video has helped you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below showing me your love. Thank you so much for watching. That's everything you need to know on how to get your driving license in the UK and how to reduce those costs.